Welcome to episode four of the Shotgun Studio podcast. My name is Keith. I'm your host. And if you can't tell by the mess of microphones on the table here, we're talking about microphones today. If you're listening to the audio only version of this podcast, just picture a table full of microphones and we'll kind of go over those. If you're listening to audio only, and you'll get to kind of hear some sounds. But if you're watching on YouTube video version, you can kind of see all the different types of microphones. There are several different types on here and obviously brands kind of vary. So we're going to talk about how I came up with this mess of microphones and what they do. I do have about 15 different ones. I think I counted. So we'll start in with how this came about. So when I decided to restart my main channel, I didn't have any equipment other than an iPhone and I wanted to start doing some more tutorial videos and I didn't want to invest a lot of equipment initially, and I was still doing research on kind of how to make be better videos. So with the tutorial videos, I do have to move around quite a bit, and I couldn't just sit in front of a microphone or have it stationary, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money initially. So I did get this, which was my first microphone, which is a Deity Lavalier mic, and it works great. It plugs directly into your phone, and then you just clip this part right here, which is the actual mic, to your shirt and you get great audio over your phone's audio, and it's just plug and go. The only thing that really sucks about it, as you can probably tell, is this mess of cord. It gets tangled up a lot and kind of gets in your way and you trip over it. So that worked for a while, and I still use it occasionally, and then I upgraded to this, which I just got and we'll go over as well. But that was the first one I started on, and a lot of people just get away with you know, recording from your phone using a lavalier mic, and that's great. Uh, but when I decided I wanted to also do a podcast, then that's when I started getting into really researching microphones, the different types, and then I got some, and then this other stuff happened. So uh, after doing the videos with the lavalier mic, and then I decided to do a podcast, I didn't have an audio mixer like this Rodecaster Pro 2 initially, and so I ended up getting... The Samsung Q2U, I got one just to kind of test it out because I wanted to a microphone that was dynamic but could also hook up to my computer. And there's not a whole lot of options out there for USB microphones that hook up to computers using the USB port. So a lot of them do have to go through an audio interface because they are XLR only, which we'll go through as I knock them all over. But um, this one works great because it's $70, very budget friendly. It is XLR and USB capable, so you can plug it into your computer or an audio interface. And it comes with a microphone stand and basically everything you need. It comes with the cables and the pop filters, and it's great. It sounds good, especially for $70, and you just plug it in your computer and go. And then if you decide to upgrade to an audio interface, then you just plug in and that through the XLR cable. So it's definitely a microphone that you can grow into, and I ended up buying two of them. I sold one of them to my buddy whose wife started a podcast, so I only have this one, uh, but it, it's great. And then you could also, as you can see, hand hold it and it works good on if you're doing an interview and don't have a boom arm, uh, but it does come with a microphone stamp. It's a little flimsy, but for the money, it's basically all you need and you just plug it, plug it into your computer and you go. So it sounds good and you get that podcast sound. So it is a dynamic microphone. So what you're listening to me on is the Shure SM7B. It's a dynamic microphone. I do have it running into the Rodecaster Pro 2 with the Shure SM7B setting. And that's what Rode says this microphone sounds the best at. So you have a dynamic microphone and then you have condenser microphones. And really, in layman's terms, what that boils down to is with a dynamic microphone, it's going to capture your voice and try to eliminate as much background noise as it can. So you really have to stay in front of this microphone kind of like I'm doing right now. And as you move away from it, you're going to see you lose a lot of sound. So it's kind of blocking out all the sound. So this is a good microphone if you're not in ideal room settings. So like most of us just recording from an office or a bedroom and not a soundproof studio, a dynamic microphone is probably going to be the best option for you and it's gonna give you this nice podcast sound. Now this one's a little expensive, so if you have the, uh, the uh, Samsung Q2U, which is much cheaper, 
that is another option and it sounds good. But the other type of microphone is the one that's sitting right here on the other boom arm, which I'll switch over to here right now. This is the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. This is a condenser microphone. So this is another one. I use both of these on the podcast because this microphone, unlike the dynamic microphone, captures a little bit more sound around it. So you're gonna be able to move around a little bit more and don't necessarily have to stay directly in front of this microphone as you do a dynamic mic. You'll see as I come around, it's still, as I move around here, it's still picking up most of my voice for the most part. And another difference between these, most condenser microphones don't require phantom power. So the dynamic microphones do. So most audio interfaces now do have phantom power, so you don't have to worry about that. It's just something that's powering the microphone. Whereas the condenser microphones, if you do have an interface that doesn't have phantom power, you don't have to worry about it. But the main difference is you're able to move around a lot. It is gonna pick up more room noise, so it's gonna pick up more sound kind of around you. So that is one thing that you'll have to kind of decide what you wanna do. But it does sound pretty good, and I really do like the sound of this Lewitt microphone. Um, I do have a couple other condenser microphones I'll show you here, but specifically I have this with guests that aren't used to talking into a microphone, so they tend to lean back or away from the microphone, and I don't want to lose their sound. So this is kind of perfect for somebody that's not used to that, whereas if you, once we get used to it and are fine and comfortable sitting in front of a microphone, then I'll kind of switch them over to a dynamic microphone. Um, price becomes a huge issue too. This is like $150, but then you have to buy the shock mount and stuff like that. So getting up there around 200 and the Shure SM7B, which is the most expensive microphone on the table, is generally brand new about 300 or sorry, $400, I think it is now. Um, so we'll switch back over to that so you can see the sound difference. And now we're back on the Shure SM7B. So let me know what you think of the sound difference between this Shure and the condenser mic, which was the Lewitt. Um, obviously, there is a sound difference, and I would hope there's a difference between that microphone and this one because this one's $400. I did buy this one used for like $250. So if you do want a SM7B but don't want to spend $400, try looking around for them used. I found this one on Facebook Marketplace, and it's in good shape. And you know, it works. So that is a really good way to go. If you don't want to drop the $400, get an awesome sounding microphone for a little bit less. Once we kept the podcast going and I knew, hey, this was going to be a regular thing. Uh, I think we're on episode 46 as we're recording this on the main podcast. So I, I knew we were going to keep going. So I wanted to try out some different ones because when you're doing research, obviously there's a lot of different microphones out there and I'm indecisive and it's hard for me to decide. And you know, I like to try different microphones to see what they sound like. I like the look of different microphones. As you can see, this uh, Shure Super 55, another dynamic microphone, but has a completely different look than the Shure SM7B. Uh, which one do I think sounds better? It's kind of close, but for my voice, as much as I like the look of the Super 55, I think out of most of these microphones, I sound the best out of the SM7B but that's to be expected. Um, but that came kind of later. So after I bought the Samsung Q2Us, I bought two of those and then had those running through my computer. But then we decided to have three people on the podcast, so myself and two co-hosts. Then I had to research for a third microphone. And that's when I'm like, that's when I just bit the bullet and bought the Rodecaster Pro 1. I knew we were going to be doing this. So to have three to four microphones if we had another guest on. You definitely need some sort of audio mixer. And for what I wanted, it was expensive, but was going to do the best. I think the other one I was looking at was a Zoom P-Track, P4-Track or whatever it's called. But realistically, I wanted what the road had to offer. So I just bought that. And I bought with it my third microphone for our other co-host was this Rode pod mic. And I really like the pod mic, obviously the look of it. And that's really what kind of made me lean towards this microphone is just the look. It looks better than this all black Shure SM7B. It's just more aesthetically pleasing and it sounded good for $100. So you could realistically buy four of these 
for one price of the Shure SM7B. So if you are looking for, you know, if you need four microphones, I would buy four of these instead of buying four $400 microphones. So um, it sounds good. I did a review video on this so you could see some different sound tests. This one right here, I actually ended up buying another one because I liked it so much. This one has the larger windscreen on it. And I think as much as I like the look of the microphone like this, I think it sounds the best with the larger windscreen on it. That is an aftermarket one. I forget. I'll have the model posted down below. I just found it on Amazon for like pretty cheap, but it goes over the road pod mic. The pod mic doesn't have a whole lot of plosive sounds because it does have a built-in uh, pop filter, but with that other one, it really eliminates any popping. And then for some reason, it makes it sound deeper because the pod mic is more on the higher end. So you don't get a lot of bass and you do have to kind of up the bass in either post or through the Rodecaster Pro. Um, but with that pop filter, it, for some reason, it sounds the best. And you can see that in that video. Um, it does sound better with that pop filter. But again, then you're getting rid of the aesthetics of that microphone, which I really like. So the other ones uh, on the table here. So I have the Shure SM7X. This is, they make two versions of this. The other one, the Shure SM7, is kind of like the Samsung. It has XLR and USB, so you can use it for both. They also make this one, which is just XLR only, so it's a little bit cheaper. One thing I like about this microphone is it's much cheaper than the SM7B. And if you buy the SM7B pop filter and put it on here, and it does fit, it sounds pretty dang close to the SM7B for a lot cheaper. So I wanted to try it out and I like it. We use this one a lot as well on the main podcast. So we really use the SM7B, the Lewitt now, sometimes the Shore Super 55, and then this thing. So those are the ones that we use the most. And if you want to get a Shore SM7B sound without paying the money for it, I would highly recommend looking into the Shore SM7. So that is kind of another one that I couldn't make up my mind and I wanted to try it and found it on sale and decided to get it. Um, and so again, couldn't make my mind up. I like trying different condenser microphones too. So doing a lot of things like YouTube video, watching different reviews and everything, I came across this. And if you see it, it's a very funky looking microphone. It's the neat worker bee. This is the original one that they actually discontinued, but it's if you can't tell, it looks, it's got a very B theme. I think I got a video on this uh, microphone as well, but it's unique and I got it just because it looks different. It doesn't look like any other microphone that you've ever seen or probably will. Uh, the new ones that they have that they've come out with is all black and a little more slimmer looking, but this one is quite large and just has a different cool look to it. And I like the whole packaging it comes into. I know that doesn't really matter to a lot of people, but the packaging that came in the original ones was pretty cool. And it was only 70 bucks. You can find them for like 50 bucks now, these original ones. So this sounds really good as well. I still use it occasionally, um, especially before we got this Lewitt microphone. It sounds really good, especially for the price. Again, it's a condenser microphone. So I use it for my co-host that likes to, can't really sit still in the podcast. So he moves around a little bit. So this is a really good microphone for him. And it's, it's really cool. So I would, if you're looking for a little bit cheaper condenser microphone and something a little different that you don't see every day, check out the Neat Worker B. Again, it's XLR only, but um, it's just really cool microphone. Check out that video on it. Shameless plug, I guess, but really cool. And then another condenser microphone that I wanted to test out because I saw some things on, you see it with a lot of streamers, but it's this Blue Spark SL microphone. Um, it's different. It's kind of shaped like a bottle. And then it's got this big shock mount. And I saw some videos on it and it sounded really good. So I wanted to try it out. I did a video on it and haven't really used it since. Um, it sounds, it's got a really sharp sound to it. And it's really cool because it does have like a high low pass filter. So um, it's also got this other function to where if you know you're going to yell or there's gonna be a really loud noise, you just flip that switch and it 
kind of doesn't cause that to clip or anything. So it has a, some cool features, and you can really find this one on sale for like 140 I think. So I think this one I'll probably end up selling for something else. But if you do, if you're a streamer, this thing's really cool because it, you can either mount it to an arm like this and have it sitting just like this as you're kind of seeing me. Or if you want to have it for streaming and you need your hands free for a keyboard, have it sitting like this. And a lot of streamers use this microphone. I know blue microphones get a lot of slack. Um, a lot of people hate on them, but I think they're pretty cool because I have this other microphone right here, which is the blue Yeti. So I was originally looking at a bunch of different microphones too uh, before I got a lot of these. And the Blue Yeti has been around for a very long time, especially when you know USB stuff and streaming was coming around. A lot of people were getting blue microphones. And then they came out with the Blue Yeti. And I just really like the look of this microphone. It's a condenser microphone, but has a bunch of different pickup patterns. So it's really cool. It is a USB only microphone. So I use this for meetings at work. So it actually is really cool because it has a headphone jack on the bottom. So I just plug my headphones in there, plug it into my computer and it works great for that situation. So I get better audio than most of the people on the Zoom chats. But with the different pickup patterns, obviously you have your standard one where it's just right in front of you. And then you have kind of a stereo mode to where it picks up a lot more around and then omnidirectional and all this stuff. And then if you have it sitting in the middle of the table and say you have somebody sitting across from you, it'll have both pickups going. So it'll pick up them on the back side of the microphone and you on the front side and kind of eliminate what's on the sides. So it's very versatile. And again, you'll see a lot of people knock blue microphones, but I have had zero issues with this microphone. I think it sounds good. I've used it in a couple of other videos where I kind of had it set off to the side and turned up the gain a little bit and it worked great. It was kind of out of the way, but still had really good sound quality out of it. And it's on this pretty heavy duty stand. I mean, it's got some weight to it with this stand and there's a mute button and you can kind of control the headphone volume and the gain on it. And it's really cool. I don't really use it for the podcast necessarily, but for like Zoom calls, like I said, sounds really good. If you're a streamer or anything, this is a really cool microphone with several different options. So I know people knock blue, but man, if, if it's something that you like, then don't let people, you know, kind of ruin your day. So saying your microphone sucks, if that's something you like, then screw what they say and yeah. But for the money, it is a very versatile microphone, and it just looks cool. Again, I really like the look of the microphone. It just has a cool, unique look to it. So there are times when I'm doing a video, and I don't necessarily want a microphone in front of me because it, I'm doing something, and it's going to get in the way, or I just don't want it in the shop for some reason. So the other type of microphone that serves a specific purpose is a shotgun microphone. So I have two of them here on the table. This was my very first one, uh, another DD. See, it kind of got several DD microphones for the price. I think they do sound really good, especially because they do come in under, uh, you know, what road that kind of comparable road microphone comes in at. So DD is a really good option if you're not looking to spend you know, because road can be more expensive. Deity is another really good option. And this was the first shotgun microphone I got. You can see it's quite small. It's probably, I think, probably like three inches or something like that long. And it does have the shoe mount, so you can mount it to your camera. Once I got this Sony ZV-E10 camera, I wanted a better microphone for it, but then also something that I can mount over the top of me in a video. So this serves kind of... it did serve two different purposes. So this went on top of my ZV-E10 and when I was doing some cool shots or was just getting really close to the camera, I would just set this on top of the camera and then you get better audio than the built-in microphone on the camera because most of those aren't great. But then this also was, I was able to put this, I used like one of the cheap microphone stands and had this kind of just out of frame right above me and then I usually do a top down shot on like if I'm breaking down a gun in that on that uh, channel, I'll have this plugged into my phone, which is overhead as well. And this is 
This allows me to get really good audio with the microphone being out of shot. And then again, I'm able to move around the table and not lose a lot of volume. So this was really cool. And it's, again, it's really small. So it doesn't take up much room and still sounds pretty good. Really with these, you just want it barely out of the shot. So I'd probably have it right here if you're watching on video only directly just above me and then pointing towards my mouth so it captures that sound. These are technically kind of condenser style microphones, but you see these a lot in the movies. If they have those long boom poles and those kind of like long skinny microphones, those are shotgun mics and they do pick up a lot of sound. And especially if you have this like really close up to something for some like really cool audio effects, they'll put it really close to something like say, if you want to open up a can of Coke, and you just want to get all the small sounds and everything. These are really good for that. And that worked for a while and worked great. The only bad thing is you can't really hook this up to an audio interface. So I really just either hooked that up to my camera or my phone and it worked fine. But then I also ended up getting later on this Rode NTG microphone. I believe this is the NTG4. And this is an XLR only shotgun mic. So much larger, so it's gonna pick up more sound. Uh, there's another version of this that's also USB capable, but I didn't really need the USB option. I just plug this directly into the road for if I'm doing something at the table here and I want to pick up more sound than what the DD uh, little microphone does. This one, I'll just mount on the same microphone stand and have it just out of the shot and it works great, and it sounds great too. Uh, I need to use this a little bit more uh, than I do, but it does have this long cover that goes over the top of it, and again, these are really good for, especially if you have a lot of, say, people around you, uh, these, these will get some really cool sounds, and again, if you don't want a microphone in the shot, I would recommend getting some sort of shotgun microphone that way you mount it directly above you and then you don't have to worry about a microphone being in front of you and you have a lot more room to move around with. Um, so those are the main different microphones that I use for this channel and my other channel as well. Uh, and then I just kind of get different ones to try them out for looks. The Shure Super 55, I'm gonna hook up really quick. All right, so you are now listening to the Shure Super 55. If you're listening to audio only, this is a retro style microphone. So if you ever saw the early Elvis videos, that's the type of microphone that this is. It does have a blue pop filter. So it really just adds this really cool blue pop to it. I'll look that over at the camera so you can see that. But again, this is a, a dynamic super cardioid microphone. So it's really gonna pick up what's in front of it and eliminate a lot of the sound um, to the side. So as you see, if I move it around, it's going to pick up a lot less sound. So this does, this is my, I guess, second, second favorite microphone compared to the SM7B. So a lot of the times on the main podcast, you'll see me switch in between the two. I just love the look of it. The only downside is the mounting options. It's really meant for these straight up and down Mic stands, as you can see, this one's a tabletop stand. Um, you see a lot of them with the stand-up ones where people are singing into them. So it is good for vocals, but also for like podcast studio type stuff. But mounting them to a boom arm is possible. Uh, the only thing is you need an extension like this because where the XLR cable is located, there's not enough room to put that in there and have it mount to a boom arm. So you do have to use this extension and then you kind of have to have the boom arm all the way down and this is pointing up because just the way this microphone is designed. But it is possible. Otherwise, you can get a desk stand like this. The only bad thing is you can't move it around like you can a boom arm. So I do use it on a boom arm. It's nice. But if I have a keyboard in front of me, it kind of gets in the way. But it's just kind of looks cool. I really like the look of this microphone and it sounds good. Uh, so this is the Shure Super 55 that you're listening to right now. And now we are back over on the Shure SM7B. So let me know which one you think sounds better. To me in these headphones, I think the Shure SM7B does sound a little bit better, but it's pretty close. So uh, what other microphones do we have here? 
The another kind of handheld mic that is similar to the Samsung QTU is this Shure SM58. Uh, it looks like just another handheld microphone if you are not watching the video version. I got this only because we were doing a podcast on the road. I needed another handheld mic and I decided to go with this since I already had a couple of Samsung QTUs. I wanna try something this different and I had this one on my radar. So I picked it up. It is more expensive than the Samsung Q2U and doesn't come with any of the extras. It just comes with the microphone and this pop filter, but it is pretty cool. It does sound good. It is much shorter than the Q2U, but that's also because it is XLR only. So you do have to use an interface for this one. I'm going to do a video on this eventually. I think I have a comparison video comparing this one to the Samsung, I think, but I'll do a separate review on this one. I don't use it a whole lot just because I don't really need it unless we do a traveling podcast, but it is another good one to have in case we need it for that. So the most recent microphone that I bought, which you can see here, is a Deity. It's another lavalier microphone, but this is a wireless one. So you can see there's two basically transmitters. It's a Deity Pocket I think it's the model number, DD Pocket or Go or something like that. But it has two transmitters and it acts the same way as the lavalier mic, but you don't have to deal with all those cords. So there is a, a corded portion, but that connects to one of these transmitters and then that just kind of fits in your pocket or clips to your shirt. And that way you don't have it connecting to your phone. It Bluetooths to this receiver here and then that, can sit somewhere within the room. I think it goes up to like pretty far, like 250 feet or even further than that. It goes pretty far. So you have the little bit of the cord that's connected to you and then the clip-on receiver and you just have that on your person and then it connects to the transmitter and you're able to move around as much as you want without having to worry about tripping over a wire or getting tangled in it or getting restricted. So I'm going to try this out. I definitely want to going to be doing some kind of like moto vlog kind of things with the motorcycle I just got. So this is something I'm going to connect to a GoPro once I get one. And that way this will be connected to me, but then it'll be, I'll have the transmitter probably in another pocket to where I'm, I don't have a lot of cord to mess with. So that's another option. If you are looking at lavalier microphones and want to spend a little bit more money, if that's the type of microphone you're going to use a lot, I would definitely look into getting one of these pocket wirelesses because it will definitely help with the headache of one. Every time I get this corded one out, I have to untangle it and it is a huge pain. And this can also connect to a camera and it comes with a bunch of different cords, charger. So it's really cool. And they make ones where you can connect a bunch of different ones. So if you're interviewing somebody, you can have one for them as well. And then it just records on the here and then you put it into your software and sync it up with your audio and video and it works great so can't wait to try that out i'm going to mount it to a helmet and see how it sounds as i'm going down the road it has a different windscreen that should hopefully help with any wind noise but i think that's all 15 of them that we went through so yeah so some of these obviously serve a specific purpose. So I have a different one for each need that I have. And then some of these other ones like the Super 55, the Lewitt, the Neat, the Blue Microphone and the other shorts, they're all just because I wanted to try them out. And I tend to kind of cycle through them and still use them. So most of these I like. The only one I think I'm gonna end up parting ways with is the Blue Spark SL. Probably, I want to get the blue Sona that they just came out with. So Logitech now owns blue microphones. And they came out with a competitor to the Shure SM7B, which is the blue Sona. So it looks a little bit different, but supposed to basically compete with the SM7B. And I think it's about $50 cheaper and also comes in white. So we'll see what that sounds like. I may eventually... Have that showing up on the channel down the road. We'll see. Keep a lookout for that. So, yeah. Let me know if you guys like trying a bunch of different microphones. I just like seeing how they sound and getting different looks. Because if I had the Shure SM7B, 
it'd be great, sounds great, but it gets kind of boring after a while. So I like to bring in something different, mix it up a little bit, get a little bit different sounds. So yeah. <laughs> so I know that was kind of boring if you were listening to the audio only version because you didn't physically get to see these, but got to hear a couple different ones. Maybe I'll do a video where we try a comparison between all of them, but that's going to take some time because that's a lot of microphones to hook up. But uh, if you guys have any questions or thoughts or anything, let me know. Let me know what microphone you use. Um, again, the most expensive one on here is the Shure. All the other ones are well below probably $200. Um, I think the m next most expensive is the Shure Super 55. But other than that, most of them you can get for around under $200 or even $100. So again, if you are just starting off in podcasting and don't have an interface, highly recommend the Q2U. Check those out. And check out if you just want something different. Check out the Neat Worker Bees. They got a King B2, which is bigger. Um, the original versions are definitely unique. The newer ones are still unique, but they went to kind of the all black look. So kind of stuck with that. But yeah, so those are all the microphones I have currently. And I'm always adding to the collection. So I'll probably do an updated video as I get different microphones and try them out. And you'll see a different ones show up on the channel on this podcast as well. So hopefully this gave you a little more insight on the microphones and kind of their different purposes, depending on what you are doing and may need them for. You know, maybe you only need a shotgun microphone or a lavalier microphone. But if you're doing a podcast, kind of need to decide between a dynamic or condenser microphone. So depending on how your room's set up and how you or if anybody else is going to be on there, if you want to have a little more wiggle room with moving around, maybe consider the condenser microphone. But in my opinion, you're going to get the best sound for a podcast studio type out of a dynamic microphone. So thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Hit that like, subscribe button so you can be notified when we come out with more videos and podcasts. Hit that follow button on audio only, and we will catch you on the next episode.